Hey, welcome back to 100 Mile Drive. And this is a different kind of video while I still have Tesla Model 3 base that has a 58 kilowatt battery. Today, I'm gonna measure magnetic field with this meter. Now, I was always wondering how much uh, magnetic field is created inside these electric cars. And I'm sure there are a lot of YouTube videos like these. So we're gonna do something similar, maybe a little bit different. Uh, we're going to measure magnetic field in multi-gas uh, inside the Tesla in the stationary. Then I'm going to drive it or have uh, my wife drive it. I'm going to measure it while the car is moving. Then we're going to hop it into gasoline car, measure in there as well. And then I'm going to do some research online and then we're going to come to some conclusion. I'm not a scientist. I'm just kind of like you curious. It's just I want to make a video about this and so we can all discuss because these cars are becoming so popular now. So we kind of want to know when these cars are moving, when we're traveling, how much of the magnetic field they generate, uh, and then can this have any adverse health effect on our cells? Let's talk about it. All right, and first we're gonna measure magnetic field inside a Tesla while it's stationary. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the meter. Uh, we're gonna measure in multi-gas. And so far you'll see it's just, you know, like a background magnetic field. So let's start where the center screen, and it's very low, a little bit more here. There's a wireless charger here, and now it's going crazy here, so. But as you can see, the distance makes a difference, right? While we are a little bit away from it. Now, the interesting part, okay, a little bit, more at the top the interesting part that i want to focus on is here where the battery is and that's where you'll see it's slightly higher but still kind of like okay not that much now watch what will happen once we start driving all right so now we're stationary and now let's go we're gonna start driving look and look hi it's funny it's going up and the magnetic field is increasing as well. We're reading at 33, 35. Even though the battery is shielded, we're still getting a feedback. All right, now I'm in the rear seat. And then let's see. First, we're the stationary. Let's take a look. And this looks normal, just the background. Nothing crazy. Again, even the floor looks fine. Now we're gonna start driving and let's see what happens here. Look, as the speed increasing, the meter, I think it's reaching the maximum limit. Now, what happens when we go up? Okay, so it's basically at the battery level. So if we go up a little bit, then it's fine. So it's only happening at the battery level. Let's see, the motor is in the back. A little bit here. Yeah. Only at the floor level. And the rear is kind of better, I would say. The front is more. Oh well, here we get quite a bit. Interesting. Now the car is gonna slow down and then you will notice how the meter will read less. Wow. Now the car is pretty much coming to the stop. So this is just a quick demo how much of a magnetic field in multigas uh, we're uh, seeing here. As you notice, you get more at the battery level, uh, but as you uh, go up, then it's less and less. I wonder how much of it you'll get in a dual motor Tesla, like, you know, where there's like an 80 kilowatt or a Model S where there's a 100 kilowatt or Model X. Now let's check in the regular car. Okay, and now we hopped into a gasoline engine car. This is a BMW X3 M40i that is a mild hybrid, means it also has a small battery and 11 horsepower engine, which is sandwiched between engine and transmission. Uh, nevertheless, it's not underneath us, but I'm just curious to see what are the exposure levels of the magnetic field in a regular gasoline car. Let's do it. 
all right here we are i'm starting this on the magnetic weighted field and let's first look at all the electronics just kind of see it's pretty much a background uh, exposure levels nothing crazy now this has a wireless charger and as you can see the levels are higher so don't keep your hands there just your phone only all right nothing here okay now here's a funny thing that as we go to the floor this also goes crazy well this doesn't have anything under the floor as far as a big battery but as we get closer look at this we also have a magnetic field here as well that's quite interesting now let's go ahead and start driving all right now we are moving and let's see if it changes i think it's about the same uh whereas in tesla basically it was going crazy when we started moving but in the gasoline car it's constantly high at the floor level that's quite interesting and the closer we move to the engine there higher the levels are all right so that's pretty interesting now i'm gonna go ahead and sit in the back and just kind of explore the back area all right and now i'm in the back of the x3 m40i and now let's let me start the meter and then we're gonna look at some levels here now here i'm at the seat level and let's go directly to the floor and it's also quite high i mean maybe a little less than in the front but still high Everywhere else is pretty much the same. Yeah. So same. So yeah, pretty much the same at the floor level. Whether we're in a Tesla or we are in a BMW that does not have a bad big battery underneath, we're getting the high higher levels. Alright, and you know what? I decided to also record a little piece here with my Volkswagen CC. This is a 10 year old car that doesn't even have a backup camera or navigation. So while I know, I know it looks fantastic on the inside, don't tell me that, but uh, all right. So I wanna see what kind of magnetic field we get here in this CC. Oh wow, obviously we are getting some from the electronics here. Okay, uh, I started the car, but I'm not gonna drive it. I don't have my assistant today. But most curious about the floor. Um, yeah, it's definitely more. It's definitely more. It's not as high, of course, like a BMW, or it's not as high as a, you know Tesla. But it's still a lot. And look, wow, it is quite a bit. We're seeing in 20s Tesla. It even peaked at 70 at some point. So we are seeing this magnetic field. Um, in that gasoline cars as well and as you get closer to engine there is your numbers so the guys don't put your feet there <laughs> keep them here somewhere wow interesting oh there's your peaking numbers look at this this is a 10 year old gasoline car wow this is now exceeding the limit whatever that's behind this okay that's interesting you know what and now I just want to make a final conclusion after driving Tesla, uh, BMW, and then checking the exposure levels in the Volkswagen, which is a 10 year old car. And to be honest with you, I'm quite amazed that I expected to see a magnetic field like uh, in the Tesla. I did not expect to see in the BMW uh, and of course in the Volkswagen specifically. So in most videos that I've saw myself, people only measure these things in the electric cars, but they don't measure them in gasoline cars uh, as much. So uh, nevertheless, I still f you know, saw that in Tesla, for example, with the higher speed at the flow level as the battery dischargers, more electrons are moving. So you'll see it more, right? And of course, this tester doesn't prove anything. Uh, it only shows like a 70 multi-gas maximum and then beyond that it can just peak out. So what would happen with the 100 kilowatt battery and you know two electric motors will it be way higher and what is the limit? The reason I was making this video is just to, just to kind of say that I wish there was more clarity on these things 
as we're moving so fast, you know, with electric cars. And then I'm sure we're gonna see batteries more than 100 kilowatts and also batteries built into the frame uh, of the body of the car. So, you know, are we like getting cooked like in a microwave uh, while driving, especially like, you know, if you're spending four or five hours in a road trip, is it harmful for your health or not? That's my biggest question and concern. Uh, and I don't have anything against electric cars. I love electric cars, their simplicity, their speed, um, you know, I love them, uh, but I want some clarity. I, I hope there will be more studies, uh, proper studies that give us some kind of limits, some numbers, uh, because from what I'm finding, and uh, usually it all depends on different environments, and even then when they say, you know, something is above certain limit, a certain limit, it doesn't mean it'll cause cancer. It, it will vary from person to person. So here it is. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and until next time.